All right, welcome back. And picking up where we left off, we're currently on page 152 in the book, uh, rotating objects with the rotate tool. So uh, there are many ways to rotate artwork, including methods um, that range from precise to more free form rotation. Uh, in previous lessons, we learned that we could rotate the selected content with the selection tool. Uh, in this part of the lesson, we're gonna rotate artwork using the rotate tool. So uh, we got everything fit to our window and then we're going to choose unforgettable beaches and if we hit control zero that will fit that on our screen and then we're going to select the rotate tool which is located right here the rotate tool all right so um Actually, first thing we need to do is do our selection tool and we're going to select this palm tree and then select our rotate tool and um, we're going to move the pointer over the bottom of the tree trunk and then we're going to just click and release to set the point that the palm tree will rotate around. It's going to be like an aqua colored um crosshairs and this is what's called the reference point so we can go right here towards the bottom and click now you see that little reference point right there and then all you have to do is move the pointer anywhere over the palm tree and then click and drag clockwise to give the tree a little bit of a lean so um you can see i clicked on the trunk right there and if you go to the right uh, we can give it a little bit of a lean so that's one way to rot or another way to rotate um, objects and then uh, we're going to use the eraser tool later on to fix the bottom of it because it's not like level with the ground anymore but uh, we'll worry about that in a little bit so the next thing we're going to do is scale or scaling using the transform each. So making artwork bigger or smaller is relatively straightforward. Uh, sometimes, however, you want to make multiple objects bigger or smaller all at the same time. Uh, you can use the transform each command. Um, objects you scale or rotate are done in place. They don't move. Uh, they just become either smaller or bigger based on what you do so we're going to take our selection tool and then we're going to click all oops all of these sets of clouds and here there's three sets so click shift it'll let you click more so you can see we have one cloud two clouds three clouds selected and then if we go to uh, object then transform and then we're going to transform each we're going to change the horizontal and the vertical scale to 70 percent and then once you hit 70 percent we're going to hit okay and then now you can see it made them smaller so it fits on our artboard better so each of the clouds is now smaller, but they're still in the same place. Um, each cloud scaled individually on its own center. We can go ahead and click off the artboard and we're going to hit save. All right, next thing we're going to do is learn how to shear objects. So shearing an object either slants it, skews it, uh, the size of the object along with the, the axis that we specify keeping the opposite sides parallel and making the object more asymmetrical. So uh, we're going to do this to a rectangle that we create. So um, we're going to select the van and we'll zoom in. Let's zoom in twice. And we're going to select the rectangle tool right here. And we're going to draw a rectangle in this window all right so um, if your fill color is not white 
Go ahead and select the fill color and then make it white. And then we're going to uh, skew the shape of it to give it some perspective. Um, and we're going to go to the shear tool. So the shear tool looks like this. It should be found underneath the scale tool, more than likely, or the reshape tool, depending on what tools you've selected last. And then um, if we move the pointer, we're going to start at the top right side, right there on that anchor. And if you click that anchor, and then you're going to hold shift and click the bottom right anchor. Oops, did I click it? Click the bottom right anchor. There we go. And then we're going to go to the... Oh, hold on. That's why it's not selecting. So... Oh. Click the anchor. Click the anchor. All right. So if you just click, oops, here, let's do undo. So you're going to click and hold off of the rectangle. You're going to hold shift and then just drag it to the right. And if yours is acting all squirrely like mine is, I am just going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to create another one. And then see if we can try this again. Oh, yeah. So once we draw it, we don't have to select any anchor points. Um, just hold shift and you want it to be about 45 degree angle. You can see right there in the numbers. That's 45. I'm using my arrow key to move it over. So it's actually in my window. There we go. And then you want to want to change the opacity of this object over here to like 60%. And now it kind of looks like these ones, so you can see through it, right? Um, next thing we're going to do is transform using menu commands. Uh, the transform tool uh, that you find in the toolbar, you know, allows you to selection, rotate, scale, shear, reflect. You can also um, do other things. So we're going to go to object and then transform. And then we're going to go to move. So you get this little window that pops up. So the horizontal position, we're going to change to 0 0.12. And then the vertical position, we want to put it zero. And you're going to click copy. And it made another version of our uh, little slanted rectangle that we created. And then we're going to make it a little bit narrower. So that way it's uh, like thinner, like one of these ones. So with your selection tool, go ahead and double click on that one that we just created and then switch to your direct selection tool. And now we're going to click the top right anchor 
and then hold shift and click the bottom right anchor. And then we're just gonna move the left arrow on our keyboard to the right a couple times until we get like a nice little thin line. Once you're satisfied, uh, you can hit the escape key to get us out of isolation mode. Go back to our selection tool. I'm gonna click off of that. And now you can see we have like the little reflection on our window. Go to file and then save. And then we're good to go. All right, so now we're gonna talk about using repeats. Um, we're gonna zoom out. Click on our little uh, plant down here and then zoom in on that. We're gonna use this for our example. All right, so with the uh, selection tool, we're gonna wanna draw a box around our plant, but not the black uh, circle. So just the plant part. All right, and then we're gonna go to choose our object and then repeat and then mirror. So when we do that, boom, it just mirrors that object, it puts it on the other side. Uh, as soon as we clicked on mirror, you can notice up here, we went into isolation mode um, and that's not a problem. So uh, you can either use this dot up here, we're gonna move it away from it. So you can move it that way. Uh, you can move it this way. You can move it like that, however you wanted to move it. Um, we're gonna undo that. Actually, if you just do like this and you wanna get it right back exactly where it's supposed to go, you can go to the repeat options over here, click 90, it'll put it right back to where it goes. And then we're going to go to select and then deselect so we can deselect our um, our object here and click on one of the leaves. If we hit shift, alt, and then click and drag on this, we can create a copy of it, right? So if you click, if you hold shift and alt and then click on an object, you can uh, copy it. Well, we're gonna do that one, we only want one. And then, uh, just select one of those, that one leave on the left and then drag it down and in a little bit and just make it a little bit smaller. And then now we have edited that. So this plant is done. And then we're gonna do this leaf right here. If you go over to your uh, fill, and choose like a lighter color. You can change the leaves to it. That's cool. Now it looks a little bit better. Notice how I chose this one, changed the color and it did the one on the other side because that's its mirror, right? All right. And then we're gonna use the puppet warp tool. So let's go ahead and get out of isolation mode. Let's go ahead and save real quick so we don't lose anything. Control zero. It's going to put us back up uh, to our artboard number one. And we're going to use a puppet or a puppet work tool on this palm tree right here. Um, so puppet work tool should be um, right here underneath the free transform tool. It's the little thumbtack looking one. We use this in Photoshop. You should remember that. 
So you should already see a pin that's right here that's already been placed on there. And then if we click anywhere, let's just click on this black dot that's already there. And more than likely yours looks like this. Um, that's kind of like too much stuff to be looking at. Uh, the illustrator automatically like tries to determine the best places to like bend it from and that's where it shows but over here in the properties panel you can just go ahead and turn off that mesh and then we're going to place some pins on here so we can uh try and warp our palm tree to make it a little more realistic looking let's put one like in the middle and then we'll put one right down there so remember um when you click on one of those pins, you can drag it and warp it. So we're gonna warp it like this. Um, if you were to put it on the outside of the circle, you could do those types of things with it to like rotate it around a little bit. That's pretty cool. Um, you can also put some pins on your uh, palm leaves. And then, you know, warp them around. Whichever way it kind of fits your uh, vision the best. All right. And then same thing with this. You can do the, uh, the rotating of your puppet warp tool. Rotate it around a little bit, whichever way it looks the coolest. And then we'll be done with that. Let's put like another pin right here and see if we can. Oof, I don't like how it did that. There we go. All right, and this part will be off of the screen, so it doesn't really matter if it's messed up. Only whatever, or not the screen, but the artboard. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, we can make the bottom of our thing look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and click the eraser. And remember with the eraser, um, it's only going to erase what's selected. So I can hold shift and then drag it. That was way too much. Let's see if that works. That looks a little bit better. It's not the greatest. I'm not really happy with it. So let's put it down here like this. We'll erase that a little bit better. Oops. Select my palm tree. There we go. All right. So that looks a little bit more realistic. Let's zoom out, see how we're looking. Um, let's go ahead and select this plant we made and put it over here. Now you can see that as soon as I tried to put it on this artboard, it's gone. So let's just go ahead and right click on it, go arrange, bring it to the front, and then we can put that bad boy right up there, and then we're good to go. So um, we have our three different our boards are two different ads one for beach vacation one for mountain vacation so uh let's go ahead and save now for the assignment we're going to turn in a pdf of this artboard oops a pdf of this artboard and then all of this ai so remember to do that you're just going to go to file save as Save it to your computer. And then you're going to choose a PDF. Go to range. So you're going to save artboard number one and call that um, beach vacation ad. And then you're going to go and save number two and then call number two the uh, mountain vacation ad. 
and then also save the AI to your computer so you can turn that in and then you should be good to go because if you look at the let's look at the assignment it's in Tuesday's folder but the instructions are there the vacation ads AI mountain vacation ad and a beach vacation ad PDF and then turn those in and that is due Wednesday um, I will see you in the next video.